going to be going to a couple of passages. The first one is in Deuteronomy chapter 11. We'll begin our reading at verse 14. Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 14 down to and through verse 17. And then when we finished reading there, we're skipping over to the little prophet of Joel, but very powerful. Joel chapter 2, and we're going to read verses 23, 24, and skip down to verse 28. But Deuteronomy chapter 11 here, first of all, everybody have it? All right, and if you don't, it's up here. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 14. And here's what God says unto Israel. And I will give you the rain of your land in his due season. The first rain and the latter rain, the former and the latter rain, that you may gather in your corn and your wine and your oil. And I will send grass in the fields for your cattle, that they may eat and be full. Take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived and you turn not aside and serve other gods and worship them. And then the Lord's wrath be kindled against you and he shall shut up the heaven that there be no rain and that the land yield not her fruit unless you perish quickly from off the good land which the Lord has given to you. Back to Joel chapter 2, and there are several verses here, but I'm going to begin reading at verse 23, 24, and then skipping down to verse 28. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with wine wine and oil. And then continuing with that literal theme of literal rain, then he begins to speak in verse 28 about spiritual rain. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And the church said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. As you can definitely see from the scriptures I've read, I want to talk about rain, but I call it this. Let's talk about the pain and the uh, gain of of the rain, the pain and the gain of the rain. Now we know that pain, uh, rain can be a pain, as we've seen recently. But it can also be a gain and bring forth much gain. Now, we all understand that one of the basic elements of life is water. Every living thing to survive has to have a certain amount of water to be able to continue to live. That doesn't matter whether it's humans, whether it's animals, or whether it's plants. I think that you understand that, that even our human bodies, the most complicated, sophisticated forms of life, that we can go way longer without food than we can water. You can actually survive well over a month without food, but you can only last a few days without water. 
And the same is true with plants. You ask or talk to any horticulturalist, agriculturalist, farmer, or somebody that just tends a small garden or even tends to their flowers. They understand that without water, you can have none of these things. You can have no trees. You can have no beauty of the flowers. You can have no crops and you can have uh, no fruits of the, of the harvest. And none of this is possible. And as, as has been said, without water there's no root. Without water there's no shoot. Without water there's no fruit. Amen. And we certainly understand that so very well. And we also know that one of the basic ways and primary ways in which all living things that water is rendered unto them is through the rain. As uh, we, we know the process and the Bible even talks about it that there's the water here, it evaporates by the sun, goes into the clouds, accumulates and then it falls back to heaven. This cycle over and over and over again. But what a great plan of God. So you can see then that why natural rain most of the time in the Word of God, it, it is a mirror of spiritual blessings. It's a mirror mirror of God pouring out his spirit and his favor and his benefits upon his people just like the rain falls upon the earth and upon all of humanity. But there are times that the rain can be a pain and we've already requested prayer for some of the folks in eastern and South Central Kentucky. And I don't know that uh, the last I heard the account was 25 deaths of individuals that have uh, died. But the most horrific story that I read was the last were four children that died. They were in their house. They, uh, the parents and the four children, they're all under 12. They got up on the roof. They finally were swept away. They uh, landed up uh, on a, in a tree. They hung on to the tree for eight hours with their four children. But finally, as the water rose and uh, the current became faster, they could not hang on and they lost their children and every one of them perished. How sad. Sad the pain of rain and floods but we we so sometimes we know that too much rain at one place in the wrong time uh, can not only be devastating and dangerous but deadly and bring pain and sorrow and and suffering into the lives that that have to experience that it, even Jesus makes reference to the rain as being painful sometimes. At the end of his great sermon on the mount, he closed out with this illustration. And he said to individuals that hear my words and do them will be likened unto an individual man who builds his house upon a rock. But they that hear my words and do not heed them and do not do them. They are likened unto a man who builds his house upon the sand, which is a, a deadly mistake. But then Jesus goes on. And so you see, he says that whether you're a child of God and you listen to the Lord and you build upon the firm foundation of him, or whether you're not a child of God and foolishly 
Build your life upon the world and the things that you have built. He said that both groups of individuals are subject to the storms of life. He said in both cases, there in Matthew 7, he said, the rains fall and descend and the floods rise. And he said, the winds blow. And to that house on the sand, devastatingly swept away. And no doubt, life as well. So even Jesus recognizes that too much rain in the same place can be a pain and bring pain and misery into the lives. But by and large, throughout the Word of God, every time you read about rain, it speaks of a spiritual blessing, of an outpouring of Almighty God generously, graciously upon His people. The most time, rain speaks of refreshment upon a dry and dusty dusty and uh, a parched land. It speaks of life that is life giving unto a barren desert and speaking not only of the natural land but of the hearts of, of individuals and that's why that here in our text that we read out of the book of Joel that in verses 23 and 24 he's talking about the natural rain. He said I'll, I'll send to you the former rain and then the latter rain and because of the rain you will prosper. You will be blessed. Uh, your, your stalls with your cattle and in the field will be full and so will they. And uh, every part of your life is going to be blessed. But then he takes the physical to illustrate the spiritual and that's why that I jumped down to verse 28 and he said that in the last days I will pour out my spirit. Just as I have poured out the former and the latter rain, so I will pour out spiritually the former and the latter rain. Now notice how Joel, I like the word that he used. He didn't say that there's just going to be a slight trickle or a slight drizzle or just a sprinkle. You know, Cynthia and I were driving down the highway the other day and it looked so ominous and, and cloudy and we just kept saying it's, it's got to rain, got to rain. And then all of a sudden there was a, just one little splash upon the windshield. And uh, we said, well, there's the first raindrop. And it didn't rain for a little while. But you see, that's not what Joel's talking about. He's not talking about one drop. He said, the Lord said, I will pour, I will pour out my spirit in abundance, in, in the generosity, holding nothing back. And we also know that uh, in the book of Malachi, uh, that Malachi used the same narrative and the, the same wording when he's talking about tithing. And he said, if you'll not steal from God, but you will bring your tithe into the storehouse. He said, will I not pour out a blessing? I will pour out a blessing that you cannot contain. <laughs> and so the Lord says that where an abundance of rain can bring devastating results to this earth, but an abundance of spiritual rain is exactly what this world needs. Needs, a flood, an inundation uh, of, of God's spirit and of God's blessing and of God's leadership. And so this former and this latter 
<coughs> excuse me, rain that he's talking about. What is it? What, what is it used for? And I have said for years that I think people are misinterpreting some of this. And so let's take a look at it. So when we talk about the former rain, it's also in Deuteronomy, it's called the first rain and then the latter rain. But what is this first rain? It was for the sowing of the crop. Okay? So back in the land of Israel, that when the timing came, and it's not obviously exactly the same time as, as here in the States, uh, but yet the season in the process of planting and caring, tending for the crop, and then later on after months, there is the harvest of the crop. So the farmers expected the first and the former rains to come just like we have in the spring. It's planting season. It's when you go out and you plow up the ground. It's the time when you plant the seed in the ground. It's the beginning of this whole process. And, and you know as well as I do that if there isn't rain at the very beginning then you have nothing. It is for the, the first rain is for the germination of the seed and the growing of the seed. You see, when you plant the seed, and I'll just utilize here in the springtime, and you plant the seed, you can have the best sunshine. You can have the best soil. You can have the best seed that you can purchase. But if you do not have the rain and the water, you have nothing. In fact, it takes the water for the seed to germinate. And in that looks like dead seed life to spring forth. And then it begins to peek its head out of the ground, the shoot. Uh, and you see, if you don't have the water for, for then and the rain, even if it does come forth out of the ground, without water it'll soon die, shrivel up, and you have no crop, you have no harvest, you have nothing. And so the former and the first rain speaks of at the beginning of the harvest season or the beginning of the planting season that leads to the harvest. Now, as Joel talks about this, and then he talks about a spiritual former and latter rain, what is the former rain in the spiritual sense? It's the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. Yes. That's the former right. rain. Right. And even uh, he talks about Peter that it was prophesied in Joel that in, in, in that time that he would pour out his spirit and he did. And so you see, at the very beginning of the birth of the church, at the very beginning of this transition from Judaism over to Christianity, that at the very beginning, there was such an abundance of rain of the Holy Spirit that was poured out, not just on the day of Pentecost. And you talk about getting the church started right. Man, and I mean, God poured out uh, His Spirit and poured out His Spirit. In fact, the Bible says in Acts chapter 2, uh, there, uh, I believe it's in, what is it, uh, 40... 41, right. But the Bible says that after Peter had preached, notice, uh, 3,000 souls were saved. And then a couple of days later, that the Bible says uh, in 
in the latter part of chapter 4. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, or, or the first part of chapter 4, moving from chapter 2 to chapter 4, he said there were 3,000. But in chapter 4 and verse 4, it said that 5,000 men were added to the church and saved. Now, it didn't count the women that on many occasions in the Bible, the feeding of the 5,000. It says they were counted the men. So obviously with women and children, there would have been way more. But here with women, 5,000, we don't know what that number would have swelled. So within a couple of days, you had close to 10,000 souls that were saved, that were planted into the uh, field of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then the Bible goes on and it, it forgets about the numbers of the numbers numbers are getting so big that as you go to Acts and you're still in chapter 4 and as we said in verse 4 it said that there there, there were 5,000 but he says in verse 32 and the multitude of them that were believed so he's not even counting he just says a multitude and then as you skip down into verse or chapter 5 and verse 14 the Bible says and believers were so much more added to the Lord multitudes plural multitudes and he says here both of men and women but notice not only uh, were they added to the church multiple thousands of individuals within a very short time of the planting of the church so this is the first and the former reign where God is pouring out his spirit and giving a good start to the church so that it will survive and so that it can thrive regardless of what comes uh, until the harvest season comes and so praise God but not only were they added but notice the power in so much in verse 15 that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on bed and couches that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits and they were healed everyone. Man. So when Joel said you do right and you obey God and you turn from your idols, God will pour out his spirit. And notice how he did. And with, like I said, in a short time, multiple thousands of individuals who were saved. Now, a lot of times, you and I, we were not there, obviously. I can't imagine what it would have been during that time. But, of course, with the good was persecution. So, uh, you know, that's not so good. And many gave their lives for it. But, but we, we, we think of the latter rain. And a lot of people said, well, that's the former rain. But in the latter rain, in the last days, God is going to pour out his spirit again. And yes, he will. But I think where some people go awry is they say this is going to bring in worldwide revival. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says in the last days, there's going to be a falling away. So this thing of, of multitudes, thousands, that was for the early church, for the establishment. But yes, God will pour out His Spirit. There will be a latter rain just like Joel promised.
But if it's not a worldwide revival, what is the latter rain for? Well, let's go back and look at Israel in what Joel utilized as their farming and the former and latter rain naturally and then utilize that as the spiritual reign of God. So the former rain was at the beginning of the planting season. And you know that you don't plant and you don't harvest the next day. There is a season of time until the harvest comes. And so we find that the latter rain does not add to the size of the crop, but it sustains the crop that is already planted. Yes. Are you following me? Right. Right. So, are we going to see the multitudes and thousands that are saved at the day of Pentecost and in the early days in the former reign? I don't think so. But I do know that us of us who are already planted, we're already in the field of the Lord. And when things get tough, that God is not going to leave us alone. But he said in the latter time day, I will be pour out my spirit again. Why? So that that church in the last days under persecution and trials and devastation will be able to stand and will be able to thrive and will be able to continue and to be able to stand fast until the harvest time actually comes. Can somebody say amen? amen. So you see, the latter rain is not for the building necessarily, but it's for the sustaining of what is already there. There's going to be this falling away. There's going to be this magnitude of rebellion against God, anti-Christ spirit, anti-God, anti-word, anti-truth. Can we even say anti-science? anti everything that is going on in this world but we are in this world as us we that have been planted but how are we going to survive we're trying to grow we're trying to continue we're trying to hold on but how are we going to survive it's because of the latter rain and the Lord pours it out so here's how I believe the latter rain is going to work. It's not necessarily going to be a worldwide revival, but there's going to be pockets of revival. There's going to be pockets of places. Yes, that which they saw in the early church is still for us today. And you see the rain, the former and the latter rain, there was no difference in the rain. It was the same. Uh, <laughs> but the only difference was the hearts of the people where the word of God was planted. So you see, we can still see individuals healed. We can still see individuals delivered. We can can even see masses of individuals saved. But as far as a worldwide revival, uh, that's not what the latter rain was for. That's not what it was tended for. But in those pockets of places where the faithful crops trying to bear fruit into the coming of the Lord, that they were saying, Lord, come, come, we need the latter rain. 
day. Send the rain upon us. God is going to be faithful to do that in those pockets. And I believe that the blessings that we have seen here at Mascuda First Assembly of God, that it's part of that latter rain to encourage us and healings and blessings and deliverances and yes, even salvations. But praise God, it's basically for the sustaining of the crop so that there will be a harvest in the very end. There's a passage of scripture that is referred to in the Psalms, Psalm 84 and verse 6. Now, I, I don't have the time to delve too much into this, but it is a psalm that they sang. You remember that everybody didn't live in Jerusalem. But when they had their special feasts and their special services, the people would come from a distance of the outlying communities and they would travel to Jerusalem, to the sanctuary is what it's called here. And he even starts out in verse 1, How amiable are your tabernacles, O Lord of hosts! For my soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. He's talking about coming to church. Man, I wish we had people today that had a desire like that. And so what he's talking about as they traveled... And sometimes it would take days for them to travel with their families to get to Jerusalem. And that's what part of the, this psalm, or that's what really this whole psalm is about. But he's saying that even as you travel, as you are, are, are trying to be pleasing to the Lord, how that even in the valleys, God is going to be there with you and sustain you. And so that's verse 6. Who passing through the valley of Baca, make it a well. And then he says, the rain also fills the pools. Even in the valley. Even in the valley. And so I want to liken this, these pilgrims and strangers making their pilgrimage to Jerusalem. And they're going to be sustained in their travel to you and me as we are in our journey. As we are trying to make it to the harvest season and the time when the Lord even calls us home or we go. That as we walk through even the valleys, the Lord is going to supply that which we have need of. Now notice what he first of all says. Uh, he said when you go through this valley, and the valley means weeping. You go through a valley of weeping. A valley valley of trials, a valley of, of, of suffering, or a valley of pain, the pain and the gain of the rain. But when you go through the, through the valley of pain, he said God is going to be there. God is going to pour out the rain upon you. But the first thing you need to do when you run into a difficult time is do everything you know to do. Dig a well. Yes. Right. Instead of just sitting back and saying, okay, God, uh, you got to take care of this, and we do do that. But God says, there's sometimes there's something for us to do. Yes. And we need to, okay, there's no water. What are we going to do? We're going to dig a well. Right. I'm going to try to find some water somewhere. Right. And then he says that if you do not find a well that has water, then he said, the rain will fill the pools. Here's the idea. If you don't get from below, you can expect it to come from above. Yes. 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 
You're not shouting yet, but I, I say that every service, but uh, I, you, you catch the drift yes. Amen. that we do all that we can do. And then when we come to the end, we say, Lord, send the rain, send the rain. And what are the pools? The pools is that they dug a well, then they dug pools out that sat on top of the ground that was basically would collect the rain when it came. So if you dig the pools, that means you're, you have faith that God's going to do it even before He does it. That means you're trusting in the Lord uh, to supply your need even before uh, the, the supply comes. But He said, just as sure as God is God, and just as sure as you in the last days find yourself uh, trying to make your journey to the kingdom of God. There's going to be trials. There's going to be valleys of pain and fear and troubles and circumstances. But he's saying if you do not find water when you dig a well, that God will pour out his spirit from the heavens and fill the pools of which you have dug. So there's so much there in that psalm because you see the more pools you dig, the more water you're going to have. Yes, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So even when the answer hasn't come yet, we've got to act by faith that we believe it's coming. Amen. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I'm not going to dig a hole and get me a gallon of water. No. I want to dig pools. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. As the prophet said, the river coming from the throne of God, not up to your ankles and your knees and your thighs, but rivers to swim in. Ah, the church today, Lord, send the rain, send the latter rain, sustain us in this old wicked world. World. Keep us from compromising. Keep us from giving in. Keep us from turning back. Sustain us. Give us the latter rain. Yes, the, the third thing, which is not necessarily mentioned in our text, but certainly goes along with the last days of all places, is referenced in the Song of Solomon. And in the Song of Solomon, once again, I, I can't get in to the details of, of the background of this, but, you know, the Song of Solomon is for a husband and a wife. There are some people who even suggested the Song of Solomon shouldn't be in the Bible because of how graphic it is. But it's there for a reason. Yes. And it's there for a husband and a wife, but which mainly is representative of Jesus and the church. So when you see Solomon talking about this beautiful girl, it's Christ talking about the beauty of his church. And when this beautiful girl speaks of her, her wonderful, handsome, strong hubby, it's the church talking about Jesus Christ. So there's so much beauty that is found in the song of Solomon, if you read it correctly. And here basically it's talking about difficult times. You come through the winter season and then the lilies begin to bloom and life begins to form. And the spring, the, the early and the former rains begin to come for the planting of the crops. But listen to what he says or she says. Uh, in, um, in Song of Solomon 2.11. She starts out there in verse 8, In the voice of my beloved, beholdeth he cometh leaping upon the mountains, skipping upon the hills. So she's talking about her husband, church talking about Christ. But then as you go down to verse 11, For lo, the winter is past, and the rain is over and gone. 
The flowers appear on the earth. So, so once again, symbolically, she's talking about difficult times that the church goes through. But if you hang on... <laughs> Uh, our, our lover, Jesus Christ, is going to sustain us in those times, and the flowers will bloom again. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The sky. They will bloom again. Yes. And, and, and I know there's a lot of different interpretations going on here, but I, I just want to spiritualize it, bring it to its uh, basic lowest element. When he talks about the winter and the rain being over, he's talking about not just the former rain and the latter rain, but, but she is talking about a winter rain. Yes. And so whereas the former rain is for the sowing of the crop... The latter rain is for the sustaining of the crop. The winter rain is for the seducing of the crop. What happens when it rains in the winter time and it's below freezing? You get ice. Ice is worse than snow. Black ice where you do not see can be very devastating. But here's the key. Ice, rain, the winter rain brings ice. And ice causes you to slip and to slide and to... I see Christy looking at Stan. <laughs> Uh, that vision came into my mind immediately. It causes us, what, Stan, to fall. <laughs> yeah. And what does the Bible say in the last days? There shall be a... A falling. A falling because of the winter rain. So you see, simultaneously, why we are in the latter rain... And God is helping us. The devil is pouring out a winter rain, seducing people, deceiving people, trying to get them to lose out, fall out with Almighty God and to fall away from what they already have. And so this falling away... That, that, that is, we read in the Word of God. It's not just people that's rebellious against God. And, and they want nothing to do with God. Yeah, that's part of it. But the sad part of the last days in the falling away is people that once had an experience with God. But they bought into the lie. They bought into the seduction. They bought into the deception. And they bought into it and turned their back on God and now walking away from the things of the Lord. So you see, there's some people that have walked away from it, but by and large, a lot of these people, it's deception. They think they're going the right way. They think they're doing the right thing. They think they're observing the right counsel. That this is what I need to do. But let me tell you, church, that even in the last days, the church is only going to be a shadow of what she was on Pentecost. And how many churches has has the shadow but doesn't have the substance and that's with us here I don't want to deceive anybody and that's why we've got to preach the truth and the word of God uncompromisingly and, and let the chips fall where they will and allow the Lord and the Holy Spirit to deal because we're living in a day all you have to do is get on YouTube and, and just type in last day prophecies and all of this stuff and you can find more people out there prophesying about the future than anything else. And that's why that we need to be careful. And that's why that that scripture and honey get ready to come 
That's why in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 13, I read it a few weeks ago, but it says, Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So this falling away is going to be caused by this worse and worse, things getting worse, not better in the last days. And if they're getting worse, how are you and I going to be sustained through this seduction? It's through the latter rain that God pours out upon us. Honey, if you'll come. Hallelujah. So church, I don't want to be a part of the winter rain. I want to be a part of the latter rain. And we as a church, we need to get on our knees in our times at home here at the church. We need to be bellering out to the Lord. God, send the latter rain upon Mascuda first assembly of God. We'll not survive without it. We don't need a new program. We don't need a new person. We don't need a new performance. But what we need is a new power that is poured out that only comes from heaven. Yeah, we'll do all that we know to do. But as the word of God says, that we go and, and we water and we plant, but it's God that gives the increase. It's God. So without the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in our lives, in our services, we've fallen into the trap of so many others of just going through a form of religion, but denying and not having the very power thereof. Father in heaven, I pray that you would help us here today. I pray, Lord, that you will strike a hunger and a thirst in our souls. Lord, send the rain. Send the rain. Send the latter rain. And Lord, that from time to time, uh, that as the prophet, uh, that we can hear the abundance of the sound of rain. Oh, hallelujah. And Lord, we're going to dig the pools. Uh, and we're going to dig the wells. Uh, and we're going to be properly prepared. Lord, on the moment, on the day, in the event, and when you do it. Uh, so God, send the rain. Rain. Send the spiritual rain. You sent the former. Now send the latter. Save us from the winter. And God, the seducing rain. Help us to know what is truth and what is falsehood. Give us that divine gift of God the discerning of, of spirits Lord help us to be able to discern what is right what is wrong what is of God and what is of the enemy help us not to fall to be seduced help us to know the word of God in these last days so Lord as we travel through the valley of Baca, Let the way the children of Israel did, Come as we make our, our way to that grand as city, we as we sang earlier, looking for Holy a city. Spirit. God, as we traverse and travel, we know Rain that in the darkest down. hour, in the most depressed moment, that you're going to send the rains, you're going to fill the pools, you're going to sustain Rain us so that, Lord, we can travel on Rain another day, another day. Down. So, God, let our Sundays oh, be a time when we come and free. fill up at the pools. Let it be a time that, Lord, on Sundays again. that we can drink Holy from the Spirit abundance Rain. of pools. And Lord, through the week, that we'll dig a well. We'll Rain. dig a well. We'll do all that we can do. And 
Father, I know that you're going to sustain us. You're not going to give us the former rain and give us such a glorious start and then fail us right in the middle or right at the end. God, we need you as much as they needed you at the planting season. We need you equally as much here at the time of harvest. So sustain us. Sustain us. Keep us. Help us. And we'll give you glory. Ah, Lord, in the name of Jesus. If you can and you will, if you'd like to meet me here.